Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very serious situation going on uh, over in the Middle East and even in mainland Russia. Also, we have a, uh, an attack happening in China that has left already seven dead and some 60 plus wounded bomb attack that happened at a kindergarten inside of China. We'll be going into these and other stories here in just a moment here. Let's first turn our attention to uh, Russia. Sputnik News reporting about Russia beginning in mid-June here. At any time now, this is actually beginning to start here. The Topolo uh, M series nuclear capability missile drill inside of Russia. We're talking about 90 plus nuclear capable missiles inside of Russia being deployed to different locations as part of a drill, making sure that Russia is able to quickly and rapidly uh, de deploy these missile systems and to do it undetected here. I want to share with you a little bit of the video footage here, some of the air, uh, air surveillance that was being shown here on uh, Sputnik News today as they were showing this missile system here on the move inside the country there. No doubt concerning for uh, NATO and their partners there. Of course, NATO has been uh, preparing for their own drill on Russia's western border there. Uh, and some believe that this is a show uh, of force by Russia. In fact, Sputnik News is reporting that Russia is doing this as a way to send a signal, a message to NATO allies that Russia is a force to be reckoned with. And some of these missiles, by the way, very similar to that of the Dongfeng 41, the Chinese version of the ICBM that carries 10 warheads. Russia actually has these missiles that carry four independent warheads. Uh, and of course, one of an 800 kiloton uh, ammo on top of that. All of them nuclear capable ICBMs and yet portable at the same time. Very serious uh, situation going on there inside of Russia. Moving on over, Russia now is accused the U.S. of uh, bringing artillery that will be used to strike the Syrian military. U.S. deploys the Hamas artillery in Syria could strike pro-government forces, according to Moscow. That's their latest opinion about what's going on there. Uh, they also state here uh, that the... Uh, the U.S. has redeployed two high-mobility artillery rocket systems from Jordan to a U.S. Special Forces uh, operation base near Syrian town of al uh, which is 18 kilometers from the Jordanian border. Deployment of the any foreign weaponry to Syria, especially multiple artillery rocket systems, has to be coordinated with the sovereign state government, the ministry statement read. It noted that the range of the Himars cannot allow for providing support for U.S.-controlled Syrian Democratic forces operating against Daesh and Raqqa. So, they said here, the U.S.-led anti-Daesh coalition has several times already attacked Syrian government forces fighting Daesh near the Jordanian border. It is possible to assume that the similar strikes could be continued in the future involving the Mars from now on. So, what objective is the U.S. pursuing in Syria, and whom are the U.S. servicemen fighting there, uh, this statement said regarding the deployment deployment of uh, this particular HIMARS weapon that has been deployed by the U.S. Uh, Special Forces there in southern Syria. We've been bringing this out to you already here on Israeli News Live that no doubt the U.S. coalition will strike Damascus and that the actions that they are taking at this particular point in time are those of a provocative nature to try to draw both the Syrian government as well as the Iranian forces into an open combat. Uh, also, I wanted to share with you World on Alert they keep posting these videos here of uh, supposedly Syrian and Russian forces dropping bombs on the city of Dada. So I decided to do a little bit of research. Why would either Syria or Russia be targeting the city here with the bombs that they're dropping in the area? Because you could not help but wonder if Russia or Syria, either one is targeting uh, this area, there's got to be a decent reason for that. Well, there was a lot of news out there about that, including U.S. media news as well about the ISIS sweeping through several of the towns and Dada being the main one that has collapsed under 
uh, or the massive rebel collapse in Dada came as ISIS swept through this region. So for those out there that are trying to make it look like Syria and Russia are the bad guys for dropping bombs on Dada, you might want to think again, this here was back in February the 20th that ISIS swept through and caused this little town to collapse. And of course, the rebel forces collapsed. That's the U.S. backed forces uh, collapsed there in Dada. Uh, but then again, there's some that would argue that the ISIS is being uh, operated by the U.S. as well. Moving on into the other news there, seven killed, 59 wounded as blast hits kindergarten in China. This happened as parents were picking up their children from school today around 4 p.m. Uh, by the way, the injury rate has risen. As I stated already, over 60 have already been injured, uh, accounted as injured in the, in the blast at 4.50 p.m. Uh, Thursday. Uh, it, it is still under investigation trying to determine who did the bombing or, or what caused this blast in the first place. So we're not uh, fully up to date on this story here other than to say it is an appalling situation that so many children were affected by this. And by the way, I've seen the photos of it as well. There were definitely children that were unconscious on the ground, one child uh, receiving CPR uh, due to this blast that took place there. Moving on to Qatar, or Qatar as some call it, the blockade, Petro uh, Yuan, coming war on Iran. This is an op-ed written by Dan Glaze, uh, Glazebrook, uh, who's a freelance uh, political uh, reporter, writing about this very tense situation going on with Qatar inside uh, or out there in the Middle East there. And, you know, President Trump, by the way, calling this uh, one of the leading sponsors of terrorism and at the same time working out a deal to buy 15, or excuse me, I think it's 15 uh, F-15 fighter jets worth about $12 billion. So I suppose so long as it helps the American economy, it's all right to continue to support those that you know are sponsors of terrorism. But the real thing about this to begin with and why the United States is even beginning to do military drills with Qatar, which still seems a bit odd since their close ally Saudi Arabia has defined them as extremist, and yet Qatar and Saudi Arabia have worked very close together sponsoring terrorism throughout the Middle East. So it's kind of like pot calling kettle black. But regardless of the situation, the thing that bothers Saudi Arabia is Qatar's close ties with Iran. And that's what this story is all about here, that he writes about here. Anyway, U.S. President Donald Trump, he writes speech to the Assembly Gulf leaders in Saudi Arabia on May 21st is worth reading in full. It is deeply disturbing, having praised himself for his $110 billion uh, arms deal with the Saudis. He goes on to talk about the threat posed by terrorism and what a wonderful job the U.S. and Gulf allies, uh, Gulfies, that is the leading state sponsors of the region's super supremacist massist death squads and its assemblies of proxies are doing in combating it. He then goes on to claim that at the root of the region's terrorism lurks, guess who, the power leading the regional pushback against Islamic State and Al-Qaeda, Iran. Starving terrorists and their territory, their funding, and their false allure of their craven ideology will be the basis of defeating them, he states. Uh, but no discussion of stamping out this threat would be complete without mentioning the government that gives terrorists all, all three safe harbor financing, backing, and social standing needed for the recruitment. Well, that is pretty much how Joe Biden, in his own attempt to whitewash U.S. involvement, described Trump Saudi's host three years earlier. But Trump is not talking about ISIS Saudi backers. He is talking about Iran, the same Iran responsible with its Syria and Russian allies for the fact that the, the ISIS flag is not today flying over Damascus. It gets worse, looking on the following passage just after he calls on all nations' conscious conscience to the work together and to isolate Iran. If we do not confront this deadly terror, we know what the future will bring, more suffering and despair. But if we act, if we leave this magnificent room un uh, unified and determined to do what it takes to destroy the terror that threatens the world, then there is a limit to the great future of citizens will all, future our citizens will have, he said. The birthplace of civilization is waiting to begin a new renaissance. Just imagine what tomorrow could bring. Glorious wonders of science, art, medicine, commerce, and inspiring humankind. Great cities built on the ruins of the shattered towns. New jobs and industries that will lift up millions of people. That's terrible. 
As he states here, this is the language of genocide. Heroism and genocide have always gone hand in hand, and the settler colonial ideology interna uh, internationalized by the likes of Trump, for which building great cities are the ruins of shattered towns. Uh, you know, I don't know if President Trump really realizes what he's getting into when he says some of the things that he says, but I can tell you one thing. Uh, that uh, the, the article sums up exactly what we see going on in the Middle East. And it's not just President Trump. It's whether it be President Trump, President Obama, President Bush, they have all been great supporters of the Saudi royal family. What for? Only to destabilize more of the Middle East and kill more innocent people? Is this the reason for it? I mean, it's deplorable what's going on in the Middle East. And Qatar? Sure, President Trump was right to say they're a sponsor of terrorism, but so are the Saudis. Well, if they're sponsors of terrorism, why give them more weapons to cause more terrorism? I mean, it's really sad the things that I see that are going on in the world today. And, you know, we might say, you know, is Russia any better? I can't say Russia is any better. But then again, everybody's trying to antagonize Russia. What are we doing with our military on Russia's western border? Or even for that fact, on the eastern border? Well, we justify it because of North Korea. Well, North Korea is a problem. I agree with that. Or is it just to justify having more forces on Russia's eastern border as well? Not quite sure. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It is a world that is in turmoil, and it doesn't seem like anybody has a good answer on how to resolve it.